I want to make it clear that work and duration are different things. Work is the man hours of effort required to do a task, but duration is the length of time that that effort is spread across. Now, unfortunately, both work and duration both have units of time. So I want to make it clear that we'll always measure work in hours. When we did the cost account in lecture three, we measured the work content in hours and we multiplied it by the hourly pay rate to get the cost, the labour cost for the task. Duration we will always measure in a different unit of time, something like days or weeks or for a very long project in months. So work and duration are different things. You've got to be very careful not to ask somebody how long will that take you? Because are you asking for the work content or for the duration? So as an example, 20 hours of work could well take six weeks to complete. Because you're working on other tasks, because you need to wait for certain amounts of time for certain things to happen, because you need a response from a supplier or somebody else to some of your questions. As an example, when we set students an assignment, there might be five to ten hours of effort in the assignment, but we say to the student, you've got three weeks to hand this in. So the work content, ten hours, the duration, three weeks. So as an example, um, work and duration, different things, but they are related. So for instance, if we've got eight hours of work and one person is doing it, then typically the duration should be one day. If we've got four hours of work, do we mean that one person is working for half a day? Or do we mean that half a person is working for the whole day? So that person could be working 50% on that task. Now there are three variables in this equation. The work, the number of units of the resource, and the duration. We need to know at least two of those different variables in order to calculate the third. So for instance, if somebody says it's four hours of work and I'm going to spend half a day on it, we know that they're going to be full time on it, 100%. Or they might say it's four hours of work, it's going to take me a week to finish it, which for some reason tells us they're not putting their full effort onto the task. Now, there are also different types of tasks. An effort-driven task is a task that can be completed quicker if we put more resources onto it. And as an example, if we were painting a room, the amount of work is fixed. Somebody's going to make an estimate, yeah, it will take 20 hours to paint the room. If we put two people onto it, there's still 20 hours of work but the duration should be reduced. If we put three people onto it, there is still 20 man hours of effort to paint the room, but the duration should be further reduced. Now we have to be really careful here, because if we put four people onto it, there might not be another reduction in duration. For instance, we might only have three paintbrushes. We may only have one set of ladders. So you can't continually add resource to reduce duration. In addition, for some tasks, if you add resources, you might actually complicate matters and increase the amount of work. So take the example you're writing a little piece of software code. You get two people doing the task. Well, if the, if the code's going to work at the end, they're going to have to talk to each other about what the, uh, the interfaces are between their, their aspects of the work. So somebody might say, it's 10 hours of work for me to do that. If you give it to two people, all of a sudden there could be 12 hours of work. Okay, another type of task is the fixed duration task. Uh, this little video clip uh, or a lecture runs for a fixed amount of time. If we have two people trying to give the lecture, it doesn't mean the lecture is done in half the amount of time. So some things have fixed duration. Another uh, example, paint drying, a machine cycle time. In these examples, the duration is 
fixed, fixed duration. Adding extra resources to the task will not reduce the duration. A third type of task may have um, fixed times or fixed dates. So things that have to happen on a certain date, maybe you're going to have a meeting with a supplier, that becomes fixed date. You've got a delivery of something on a fixed date. Now, your task could be effort driven or it could be fixed duration, but it could also be constrained to a particular date. Our final resource type has a fixed unit characteristic. So it could be to do a task, we need at least one machine setter and one inspector. Or for the educational example, to do this lecture, we need at least one lecturer and at least one student. And if we don't have those number of units, the task is not going to happen. Uh, in this case, we can fix the number of units in our equation. To further complicate the matter, work might not be spread equally throughout the duration. Sometimes when you give people a task to do, they jump on it straight away, do most of the work, and then just finish it off over the rest of the time that was out allowed. So they have front-loaded that work. Sometimes you give people some work to do and they don't even look at it until nearly the deadline. Dare I suggest that this is students and their assignments? We've given them a three-week duration for a 10-hour piece of work and they try and start it at 9 o'clock at night when they've got three hours left. We need to understand how the work is spread through the duration. Now these uh, profiles or contours, work profiles or work contours, are the typical ones that you can actually set up on a tool like Microsoft Project. Uh, what I've done on this slide here is I've taken out of Microsoft Project how long a 40-hour task will take in duration when we apply these different work profiles. And it's better to see this graphically. A flat profile means we're going to do the same amount of work each day through the duration. In the early peak or the front load, we do more work at the beginning of the duration and then we taper off and the back late peak or backloaded profile, we do more work at the end. A typical work profile is the double peak, where you give somebody a piece of work to do and so they make a good start on it and then they get distracted by something else and then towards the end they think, right, I need to finish this off. So that's the double peak profile. So we need to understand what task type we've got, whether it's constrained to a date and how the work is profiled through the duration. And now we're going to estimate the duration for the tasks. Now these estimating techniques apply for the estimates that we need for work and for costs. And we're actually looking at the estimates for duration. We can bottom up estimate by looking at every task on the work breakdown structure and say, what's the effort, the work? What's the duration? What's the cost? And by looking at every task from the bottom up, we can build the total duration or cost for the project. We could use comparative estimating, where we say, well, the last project was a very similar size and scope to this project, so we're going to use a comparative figure. Or parametric estimating, where there might be a defined standard for the installation of a number of electrical sockets, and we can say, well, we've got 20 sockets in this room, or we've got 30 sockets in that room. And as long as we've got plenty of previous data, we should arrive at a reasonably accurate estimate. Now, we need good estimates in our project plan. So allow time for people to think and consider about the estimate, rather than uh, surprise them by saying, how long will that take you? And they guess at a figure. In the same way, in lecture three, when we asked for the work content of a task, when we're asking for the duration, we have every right to say, how do you know? How confident are you? What are you basing that estimate on? For some tasks, we could even ask for the estimate more than once. If somebody's been guessing at an estimate, when you ask them a second time, it's unlikely they'll guess at the same duration. 
We need to learn from past experience. So we're going to record the estimate at the beginning of the project, and we're going to look at the actual figures that were recorded at the end of the project. And we're going to have a lecture on project reviews and project monitoring and control, but we're actually going to be able to compare what actually happened with what we thought was going to happen. So at the project review, we'll go through a lessons learnt and we'll say, you said it was going to be a six week duration. It was actually five weeks. What can we learn from that if we were to do this again?